Psalms chapter 19. Now verse 1 to 6, we're going to look at the creation and the, the creator. Verses 7 to 11, we're going to look at the word of God. And 12 to 14, those sins that we love. To the chief musician, all right, this is a to be sung, a psalm of David. The heavens, there are three heavens, not seven, from the land from the earth to as far as the eagle will fly, to as far as where the eagle flies to that solid mass that you can't get to heaven. You'll bounce yourself off, and then God's abode. The heavens declare the glory of God. And when the, the Hubble comes back and shows us all these beautiful pictures that no man can see. Come on, light years away. Why is there such a beautiful, colorful galaxy and stars out there that without technology, man would never see it? God sees it. The devil sees it. Maybe the angels and the people that are in heaven today, maybe they see it. They, they say that there are fish in the bottom of the ocean, the deep as man can go, with submarines. And they find they're as colorful and bright, <coughs> pretty fish. And man can't go that far on his own. Why? Because we have a God of excellent ability. We have a God who loves color. And when a man dies and goes to hell, he goes into blackness. He has no more color. The firmament showeth his handiwork. That's back in Genesis 1. That's outer space. That's the universes, that's the stars, that's the meteorites. And that all points to God, the creator. Day unto day, every day, other speech. Every single day, the glory of God in his creation speaks out, God created. It never says evolve. I mean, they can't find these missing links, but they can, they can see a bird that leaves New England. They can find this all the, way, all the way down to Florida. And you get a man who gets in the car with technology, and he gets lost on the way to Florida. And night unto night, day and night, speaks of the creation of God, the creator. Showeth knowledge, what you know, what you know. God is creator. And if you don't believe God is creator, then you're going to be found at fault. There is no, no speech or language where their voice is not heard. Go anywhere in the world today. And you will see what we're looking at right now, the outer, look at outer space. When you go up to Alaska, you see that wonderful, which I've never seen, the Aurora Bialis. When you go down to Antarctic and you look out, you can see stars clear. When you look out in Daytona Beach, you can see the North Star. You can see uh, Orion. Their line is gone out through all the earth. We're talking about the creation of God. It's there. And it's funny how it talks about speech and language. Up to the cell phone, their line, a telephone used to have wires. And their words to the end of the world. There was a time you could pick up a telephone that had a cord and you could call anywhere in the, <coughs> anywhere in the world that had a telephone. Their words in the end of the Okay, talk about the creation again. What is that words of the creation? God made me. I did not evolve. You have to be taught out of the creation to believe evolution. Like I said, I remember you heard this often time. When I was a little boy growing up with my friend Kevin, we would sacrifice earthworms to God because God was pleased with earthworms. I don't know where I got that from. We would lay on our backs... In my backyard, we had like a little mound of, of dirt. We'd lay on our backs and just look at the sky at night and think how great God was. 
And we wonder where God was. I didn't realize he, the Bible says he's in the north. And I used to think as a little boy, when we looked up at the stars, I, 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 I used to think those stars are not stars. I used to think that in that blackness, there were little hole punches. And what God was showing us was a little light of heaven, that, but not the full light. In them, he has set the tabernacle of the sun. So you see, we're looking at the universe. In th that sun is set in the heaven, the second heaven. There's a tabernacle for the sun. The sun has its dwelling in the center of the un our universe. It ain't going to move. Well, if everything changes with evolution, how come the sun hasn't changed? How come the how can the moon has not crashed in the earth yet? The moon has a tabernacle. The moon has its place. And it, So verses 1 through 6 is the creation. And the tabernacle of the sun is movable like the tabernacle on the earth. When God had the pillar of a cloud and the pillar of fire, it moved. So does the sun. Which is the bridegroom. Now this is second advent, but relation to the sun. Jesus Christ is our son of righteousness, according to Malachi. Cometh out of his chamber. Now Jesus, he comes out of heaven. He's the bridegroom, we're the bride. As far as the sun, when it comes up in the, in the morning, every east. Here it comes. It's coming up. Unless it's cloudy. And rejoices as a strong man to run a race. The Bible says the sun is pleased to come up. A strong man that runs a race. That's a man who's been working out. That's a man who's dedicated. That's a man, I am going to do what I need to do to run this race. And I'm going to not do what I don't need to do to run this race. So the sun has a purpose. His going forth, the sun and Jesus, his going forth is from the end of the heaven. The end of the second heaven is heaven. <laughs> and his circuit into the ends of it, east to west for the sun. Sun rises in the east and comes up in the west. And there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. There's nothing hid from God. Well, I'm sitting in a cardboard box and I got the cardboard box closed. Yeah, but you can you, you're heated by the sun. The Bible tells us in the book of Psalms that it's to be sung. The sun gives us heat no matter where we are. Even if you're in Antarctic, you get a little bit of heat from the sun. If there was no heat in the sun, the place could be completely all ice. Now, 7 to 11, the Word of God. Now, watch what the Word of God is. The law of the Lord is perfect. Number one, perfect. Converting the soul. I thought it was movie night. I thought, come to our church for a fellowship dinner. Well, we're gonna have we're gonna have to bring your family, bring your friends to church because you know the law of the Lord is perfect. What's the law of the of the Lord? Thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. What's that show you? Paul says that that law tells us we're sinners. Paul says, except I know coveting, I would not know lust. The testimony of the Lord, number two, is sure. We got perfect and we're sure. What does it do? Making the wise the simple. You think you're a wise guy, the, 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 the word of God, the testimony of the Lord, well, you know what? You're not so smart, are you? When you read the Bible, oh boy, I'm sending that sin. I guess I'm not so good. I'm a sinner. Oh, wow, I've never seen that before. Well, that's interesting. Guess I didn't know it all. When you hear the Bible preach and he preaches to you, whoa. 
Okay. I understand now. The statutes of the Lord are right. Perfect, sure, right. Rejoice in the heart. Why did God give us a Bible? For our heart. So we know what to do, what not to do. What to expect, what not to expect. Again, the commandment of the Lord is pure. Perfect, sure, right, pure, enlightening the eyes. Oh, I see what I am now. Undone, unclean, in need of a Savior. And I have a Savior. I'm saved by Jesus Christ. And I still sin. No wonder David got himself in trouble. Wow, Paul, you did have a difficult life. Jesus, with everybody doing that to you, you still went to the cross in love? Adam, why didn't you stop Eve? Moses, you ever realize you were talking to a burning bush? Bam, did you know you were talking to an ass? The fear of the Lord is clean. Perfect. Sure. Right. Pure. Clean. Look at Job 28, 28. Job 28, 28. And unto men he said, Behold the fear of the Lord. That is wisdom. You want to be wise? Fear the Lord. And to depart from evil is understanding. And you know what I just said. So there's knowledge, there's wisdom, and there's understanding right there, the three. Enduring forever. How long is forever, ever? The Bible says, Paul says, prophecy will go away one day. One day we won't need prophecy. Paul says, tongue shall cease one day. But the fear of the Lord? When we stand before God at the judgment, at the great white throne, I, we stand before God at New, at New Jerusalem. This is still going to be that fear, that reverence of God. He's holy and right. The judgments of the Lord are true. And Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth. And righteousness all together. Truth and righteousness all together. Perfect, sure, right, pure, clean, true, and righteous. That's what the Bible is. You know, they got to change textbooks every seven years. More to be desired are they than gold. California was, was, was began a state in this country because for the gold rush. Not for the Bible rush, for the gold rush. That's why it's all fouled up. Yay, said the devil. Yay, said David. Then much fine gold. I got some gold for the... No, even finer gold. The Bible is no bed. Uh, the Bible is to be honored more than the value of gold and fine gold yea much fine gold sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb you're the feast on the bread of life you're the feast on the water of life you're the feast on the honey of life you're the feast on the milk of life the word of god Put down the candy bar and read your Bible. Moreover, by them, now what's to them? The law, the testimony, the statutes, the commandments, the fear, the judgments. Moreover, by them is this, is thy servant David warned. 
David says, by them, I know what to do and I know what not to do. I have been pre-warned by the scriptures what God expects from me. And keeping of them, there's a great reward. And that goes so for the Christian too. If we do what the Bible tells us, we will get gold, silver, precious stone. We'll get rewards, crowns, and inheritance. And a well done. Did you get some piece of land? Promised by God. Now verse 12 is remarkable. Who can understand God's error? Did you make, you mean God makes an error? If he did, you wouldn't understand it. And yet there are people say, oh, there's errors in the Bible. Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Uh-oh. Lord, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I need you to show me. Keep back thy servant, oh, David, also from presumptuous sin. Since I do, I know I do it, and I have enjoyed in him. That's a hard one. I mean, the law prescribed that you did a sin ignorantly. You didn't do it purposely. That's the law. We're in the law right now in Psalm. Let them, the sins, have not dominion over me. Don't relish and keep dwelling in your sin. Forbid it. Forget it. Get it done. Repent of it. And put it away. And if you do it, repent of it, forgive it, forget it, and move on. Say no. Then shall I be upright if I got rid of those sins. And shall be innocent from the great transgression. Great transgression. What's the great transgression? I did it because I wanted to do it. How's that one? Let the words of my mouth, what I say, the meditation of my heart when I pray, pray from your heart, be accepted in thy sight. Jesus said, every idle word shall be judged. O Lord, my strength, that's where your strength lies, and my Redeemer. God paid for me, God bought me. I am redeemed. 